Rebuilding a Bernac Vulcan model steam engine toy. Part 11. Assembling a collection of parts which when machined will make a new boiler kit to improve the safety of this vintage steam toy. It is important to visualise the finished project before starting manufacture. This new boiler which I'm about to make, I'm hoping will look very much like the original externally. The plan is though to make this boiler using stronger materials, therefore it will be safer. For instance I'm using a 16 gauge boiler barrel, which means that the wall of the boiler will be thicker than on the old one. This clip shows the machining operation from the last episode. Most of these small steam toys do run on very low pressure, mainly from a safety point of view. The lower the pressure, the lower the temperature. And also they generally use a single oscillating cylinder held to the port face by a light spring. And that's another reason for running on low pressure. High pressure steam would push the cylinder off the port. Mammoth steam boilers running at a low pressure appear to work well until you let them run dry and the heat of the burner soon takes the overall temperature above the melting point of soft solder. The design of this old Burnack steam boiler is quite different. The outer shell is made from copper and the inner tube plate and the cap are made from brass. For the tube plate and top cap on the boiler that I'm about to make, I'm going to use gun metal instead of brass. I'm going to make the top cap internally much thicker than this, so we'll not need boiler bushes. And whichever type of safety valve I decide to use will screw directly into the gun metal top cap. Selecting the correct safety valve is quite important. The current one and the previous one that I've just shown look okay. The next size up doesn't look ok. Quite a nice looking safety valve but it's too big. I want to use a proper safety valve though so that when it blows off all the steam goes in an upward direction rather than going all over the place around an o-ring. I would like to say that boiler making is something new to me. I've never ever in my entire life made a boiler. I've repaired one or two, and I mean literally one or two, but I've never made one from scratch. Here's the original boiler bush back in position on the top cap, and as you can see, a soft soldered boiler bush is not a good idea. If you've been watching this series, you will see how easy this boiler bush came out in the first place by using a long allen bolt. The only bushes I intend to use on the new boiler barrel are a pair of bushes for a proper steam engine boiler water gauge, complete with a blowdown valve. The inner single tube tube plate will be made from gunmetal. Here are the old parts, and the only bit that I want to keep is the chimney. That's made from brass, and it will look quite good stuck on top of the gunmetal cap. It's not of course going to be a fixture, it will just sit on the bit of the centre flue sticking out of the top. All of the other parts shown here will go into my scrap bin. I sent an email to Matt at Blackgates Engineering to see whether or not they did gun metal over two and a half inches in diameter. The good news is, yes they did, and here they are. The bad news is, gun metal is quite expensive, but it's well worth using it. It is far superior in every way to using brass in boiler construction. The pieces of gunmetal that I bought are a little bit too big, and I did that on purpose. I want to show the machining method in detail. To give you some idea, here I'm placing the original top cap on top of the piece of gunmetal. The other piece of gunmetal, once it's been machined and thinned out to fit in the tube, will be approximately in this position. And once everything is together and the engine's reassembled, it should look something like this. That's the plan anyway, time will tell. Don't forget, I've never made one of these before, but I am confident that I can improve the design. This top cap has been pressed out of a single piece of brass. As my boiler is not going to be a mass-produced item, I'm going to make it in an entirely different way. I intend to run my boiler on £30 per square inch. That is, after a hydraulic test at twice working pressure, £60 per square inch. 
I wrote the word brass on this top cap so that you can see the difference between brass as a metal and gun metal as a metal. This photograph was taken after I dismantled the original engine. And in memory of the old Burnack Vulcan, this is how it used to run. I'm about to show a clip from a previous episode of the engine running and explaining why I would not do what I'm about to do to an expensive collectible antique engine. If this engine was a vintage Bing or Marklin or similar, then I wouldn't even think about modifying it. It would be a sympathetic restoration. But I'm so pleased with the way this oscillating cylinder part works, I think it's worth making this into a reliable engine. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to machine a pair of phosphor bronze bushes and solder them into the brass bracket that holds the crankshaft. Then I'm going to make a stainless steel crankshaft which will be a good fit in the bushes. And once I've done that, I think the flywheel may start to rotate with some degree of concentricity at all speeds. That's about it for this episode. I need to get on with some other jobs before I start to make this boiler. Plus, I'm hoping that eventually the temperature will drop because it's a bit too warm in the UK at the moment for my liking, particularly where silver soldering is concerned. And that is it for this episode. As I always say, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.